Thank you, Congressman Rohrbacher, for joining us for the interview uh, in your office. Uh, you have recently introduced a resolution in Congress calling for the right of self-determination of ethnic Azeris in Iran. Uh, could you please tell us a bit more about this resolution and what inspired it? Well, of course, I believe as an American that people have a right to control their own destiny through a ballot box rather than through a bullet box. <laughs> and uh, uh, when I visited that region, it became very clear to me that Iran is made up of, of numerous groups of people that not only don't like the Mullah regime, the dictatorship, but because it is such an oppressive regime, that they might want to be independent of that regime rather than under the control of this fanatic, of religious fanatics. Uh, and so uh, I decided that I would be supportive of those people, as I am in other parts of the world, their right to have a vote on whether or not they will remain part of, uh, of a government, or of a country which is governed by uh, uh, this monstrous uh, uh, religious fanatics uh, who uh, uh, treat them badly and, uh, uh, and violate their human rights, and uh, perhaps they don't want to be under that government anymore. They should be given a vote to determine what they want to do in the future. Congressman, in your statement to the public, you have stated that it's not up to the bureaucrats in Washington or to the Mullah dictatorship in Iran to determine the fate of ethnic Azeris in Iran. Do you believe that there's an agreement between the U.S. State Department and the Iranian government when it comes to the question of ethnic self-determination of Azeris? I think the United States government is too prone to go around the world and not cause any uh, 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 conflict within a country by supporting the right of various peoples uh, to have their own country if they're not satisfied with the, with the government or country in which they live. Uh, that has serious repercussions for human rights because if there's a group of people within one country that don't want to be there and would vote not to be part of that society, uh, then you have uh, you know, basically what happens is you, those people tend to be oppressed by the government because the government wants to keep power over them. Now, it's, it, it's much better uh, for, I think, as a, as a U.S. policy, much better policy would be for us to support elections, free and honest elections, for people who would like, to, who, who might want to be independent of the country and the government which is now over them. So, I mean, uh, for example, we've seen examples of that and Czechoslovakia, the Czechs and the Slovaks managed to separate and certainly we had India and Pakistan and we've had many countries and, and even Bangladesh from Pakistan. Uh, we've had examples or, where countries where people just didn't want to be uh, part of that government and that country and they'd rather be independent or be part of another government we should support their rights to have a vote on that issue. Officials in America frequently state that the United States is a status quo power, meaning that uh, the United States government adheres to the principle of territorial integrity when it comes to nations. Uh, what would you say to those who state that dividing Iran would be in counter to the U.S. interests? Well, I don't believe in dividing Iran. I believe in letting the people who live in Iran make their own decisions about what country and what structure they want to live under. Uh, so I don't believe in dividing Iran. I don't believe in dividing any of these countries. But I do know one thing. We should not be, <clears throat> the people of the world today, should not be held uh, to uh, 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 promises that were made uh, and plans that were made 200 years ago. There is no reason for us to have to defend uh, borders and, and, and relationships that were created by European imperialists 200 years ago. I mean, basically what we have in, in vast stretches of the planet are boundaries that were determined by colonial powers. There is no uh, over indigenous people in most cases. Now, I don't see any reason why the United States or anybody else should feel compelled to have to defend those borders. But how do we change them? Well, 
we, we need to support the right of self-determination through elections, whether it's in Iran with the Azaris or the Baluch people, I might add, or the Kurds or any other minority that might not want to be part of Iran. People have a right to vote to what they're going to do. Now, the people who are upset with me about this seem to say, oh, well, you want to divide Iran. No, I just want to give the people there a chance to have an honest election and not and determine their own destiny through the ballot box. So uh, there's, and there's no reason for us not to do that. We often hear about Iran's nuclear program uh, or its uh, religious radicalism, but you're the first elected U.S. official to actually draw attention to the plight of ethnic Azeris in Iran. Uh, do you expect to gain support from other quarters of the American society or government in this matter? I think the American people need to have an honest debate about what, uh, what the policies of our government should be uh, to other governments around the world in, in a fundamental way. We have up until now been a status quo power, basically, and that's a, an accurate description of us. And uh, we expected countries to stay together so there wouldn't be any conflict. It's, it's like, please don't disturb us. You know, do anything you want, but don't disturb us enough that, that you're going to ask that you be independent. Well, the Czechs and the Slovaks did it peacefully. These type of things can be done peacefully. And uh, there's no reason why the Czechs and the Slovaks needed to stay uh, in, a, in the same political configuration that was established uh, before World War II, and there's no reason why the rest of the world has to stay in boundaries that were established by colonial powers back 200 years ago. So, uh, no, I, I, I think that uh, my position is a pro-freedom position, is more consistent with the American people, uh, and I think the American people in their hearts will support people who, who want to be, uh, want to have a vote to determine whether they should be independent of the country they are now of the government that now oppresses them. And that is especially true and should especially be true of Iranians, Iranian Americans and people who live in Iran. Because in Iran you have a, a yes, a, a very sizable minority of Persians who run that country but uh, the are of other ethnic groups that may not want to be under the, the mullah dictatorship. And this is, of course, one way to weaken the mullah dictatorship. And perhaps after all of this, the only thing that will happen is maybe some free elections. Maybe the Azeris will vote to stay part of Iran, but it will weak, weaken the mullahs and it will weaken their dictatorial power in that country. That would be a plus as well. I suppose your resolution has been met by various reactions from different parts of the society and the international community. Uh, what kind of responses have you received, both from the critics and supporters of the measure? Well, I'm very surprised that uh, American uh, Iranians, uh, uh, you know, people who came here to, uh, from Iran escaping the Mullah dictatorship, do not understand that what I'm suggesting is something that would weaken the Mullah dictatorship, which has been their oppressor and why they left that country. Uh, that's, it's very strange to me that they can't see something as easy as that. And then a lot of people here in the United States say, oh, how horrible it is. Uh, the Azaris don't want to be uh, independent. The Azaris don't want to have, uh, uh, they consider themselves Iranian, they don't want to separate. Well, I'm not saying they should. Why should anybody be mad at me for saying, well, okay, if you're right, they'll never vote to be independent, so what, what are you worried about? And, uh, but no, there's been the negative reaction among anti mullah Iranian exiles has been very surprising to me. Uh, it's as if I am advocating that the Azaris automatically decide that they're going to not be part of Iran, uh, which is not my position at all. And my position is give people a free choice, and if these people are right, that the Azaris have feel they're, they're an intricate part of, the, of Iran and always will be, well, then they'll vote not to leave Iran. Simple as that. Congressman Rohrabacher, you're a Republican, and your party's candidate is vying for the White House. Uh, do you believe that uh, the question of Azeris' ethnic self-determination may become a cornerstone, cornerstone of the U.S. policy toward Iran 
under the Mitch Romney administration? Well, I am a pretty outspoken person here in Washington, D.C., as most people know. And uh, however, um, there are a lot of people who um, pay attention to the fundamental ideas that I am suggesting. And when I suggest a fundamental different approach to various foreign policy issues, uh, quite often, well, in the beginning, they always oppose, people always oppose them. But after a certain period of time, people take them seriously. And I've uh, actually been noted by some people as being a source for, uh, for policy reform that will uh, uh, make sense in the long run. So I think there's a good chance that the new administration will be paying attention to some of my foreign policy uh, suggestions. I mean, I, I have suggested that instead of uh, uh, sending American military personnel all over the world, that we find those people who are our friends and work with them, help the, help the enemies of our enemy, rather than trying to uh, have American military might as our leverage in different parts of the world. And I think the new administration will find that to be a cost-effective way uh, of, uh, of approaching uh, their, their dealings with the rest of the world. Uh, it costs too much money to send troops everywhere, and it's not, uh, it's not effective. People resent that. But if you're helping people, especially by demanding free and fair elections, uh, the response, I think, will be different. We, could, we should be making friends with the Azaris and, and all the rest of the people, not just in Iran, but other people, the Kurds uh, uh, in Iraq, for example, and, and, uh, and Iran. Uh, they, they sh we should be friends with them as well. They should have their self-determination.